In this video, I will teach you about the Kronecker Delta tensor. I will explain exactly what it means and show you what the difference is between its indices being raised versus lowered. By the end of the video, you should have a clear understanding of how all of these forms of the Kronecker Delta are connected. Before I begin, just a quick reminder, if you've liked my video so far, please hit that subscribe button to help this channel grow and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Okay, so we'll start with this form. The Kronecker Delta tensor is defined as being equal to one when i equals j, and it's zero if i is not equal to j. That sounds simple enough, but what exactly is this object? And what can it act on? In order to answer these questions, we'll need to revisit the three Einstein notation rules I mentioned in a previous video. Two of these rules specified how to write the components and bases of both vectors and dual vectors. But remember, a vector is just a type 1, 0 tensor, and a dual vector is a type 0, 1 tensor. So it's natural to ask, how then should indices for a general tensor be placed? For this, we will need to add one more rule to our list. This new rule states that a KL tensor has K upper indices and L lower indices. And using this rule, we can now answer the first question. Since the Kronecker delta has one upper index and one lower index, it must be a type 1, 1 tensor. Now what about the second question? What can it act on? To answer this, let's recall what the definition of a tensor is. A tensor of type KL is a multilinear map from K dual vectors and L vectors to the real numbers. So in the context of the Kronecker Delta tensor, we would say that it is a type 1, 1 tensor that is a multilinear map from one dual vector and one vector to the real numbers. We can therefore answer the second question by saying that the Kronecker Delta tensor acts on one dual vector and one vector. In Einstein notation, it would look like this. If we then evaluate this expression, all the terms where i is not equal to j are zero. So we are only left with the terms where i equals j. And if i runs from 1 to 3, we get the following. Okay, now that we've answered these two questions for the Kronecker delta tensor of this form, what about the other two forms? Well, we simply need to apply the new Einstein notation rule. So the Kronecker delta with two upper indices is a type 2, 0 tensor, and therefore it acts on two dual vectors. The form with two lower indices, on the other hand, is a type 0, 2 tensor, which acts on two vectors. Okay, so that seems clear enough, but you've likely also seen these tensors acting on only one object, either one vector or one dual vector. How is this consistent with what I've been saying? Well, although the definition of a tensor involves it being a multilinear map, there's nothing that prevents one from allowing the tensor to act on only a subset of the objects that are fed into it. For example, a 1, 1 tensor receives one dual vector and one vector as an input. But it might be useful in certain circumstances for this object to act on only one or the other. And although a 1, 1 tensor is a multilinear map from one dual vector and one vector to the real numbers, it also can be a linear map from either one dual vector to one dual vector or from one vector to another vector. The only caveat is that it must be defined consistently with the multilinearity property of tensors. We can see this consistency with the Kronecker Delta tensor by considering the calculation we just went through a few moments ago. We started with delta ij acting on a dual vector and vector by mapping them to a real number. And we ended with a real number that equals phi sub i times vi. But this could equivalently be thought of as the Kronecker delta only acting on the dual vector phi sub j and producing another dual vector phi sub i. The dual vector then acts on the vector vi to produce a real number. And the same kind of reasoning can be applied to the other forms of the Kronecker delta. So one can view all of these tensors either as multilinear maps or as specific linear maps that are all consistently defined. And if you study enough physics, you will see the Kronecker delta show up in all of these forms, where at times it can be frustrating and confusing trying to figure out which type of tensor is being referred to. But if you keep these four Einstein notation rules in mind, things should become crystal clear. 